Aaron. Oh, that was cool. I wish I was cool like you. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. Let me get my note up here. Grab and go. Is it where you son of a gun? Okay. All right. Three, two, one. Welcome back to another episode of the Photographer Mindset Podcast. I'm your co-host, Seth Macy. And I'm your co-host, Aaron Manis. We have a new format today. New format for an episode, don't we? We had a listener write in an email success story, and we're trying it out. It's a really good email, uh, kind of filled with this person's journey from beginnings to where they are now. And there's lots of great talking off points. It gives us the ability to rehash and retalk and you know rediscuss if those are all words. Some of the mm-hmm. con- major concepts that you know, we've discussed on this show and that this person has applied and that has gotten them some, some significant results. A uh, good chance to remind people of these things and it should make for a unique episode. Yeah, I'm excited to give it a try and give it a whirl. And uh, yeah, a lot, of, before, a lot of cool stuff. Before we even get into it though, this was kind of interesting. We should be totally like upfront and honest. We're like, how do we, how do we make this episode not <laughs> seem like it's all about us because that's you know that's not really the the method here yeah we we hemmed and hawed even if we were going to do this uh i think it's important to know that you know occasionally we'll get a, a nice email that kind of says thank you um we're not trying to rub that in people's faces but this email is very detailed in terms of um where they found value in the podcast. And I think it's a good sort of cumulative speech, if you will, on what we try to do. And we kind of just wanted to touch on some points and hit on it and some jumping off points throughout this email that I think for one person to have taken all this in and and see progress and see success, I think is something to not ignore. Um, and we did talk about it for maybe 20 minutes and like, we got to just, let's make sure that we're not like, you know, giving ourselves awards here. It's not about that. It's just about right. letting people in to other people's experience and sharing things and maybe keying in on some key points that we go over that, uh, this guy, Aaron also, and Aaron, um, found and felt and utilized and then found success from. So, um, that's the intention. Hopefully it comes right. off that way. And yeah, I say we get into it pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah. That's absolutely right. I think personally dealt with a little bit of imposter syndrome myself here, even just reading that, uh, you know, cause we started from humble beginnings too. Um, we're still learning, we're still not experts, but I mean, if we can, if our episodes help somebody point 1% get to where they're going, that's a contribution. I'm you know, willing to make with you every week and with our guests. So should we just get right into it? Let's get into it. All right. Um, at times, I think we'll paraphrase a little bit because it was kind of lengthy. Uh, that's okay, though. Detail's good. Uh, and we like emails like this. So without further ado, this is from listener Aaron Michael, or Aaron Haley, sorry. And hit, let me redo that. This is from listener Aaron Haley. We have another Aaron on the podcast now today. <laughs> uh, his Instagram account is Aaron underscore Michael underscore productions. And it says to start the email. Good afternoon. This is Aaron Haley with the account, Aaron Michael productions that spoke with you the other week about writing my current success story. I like to make note of things that I hear in the podcast that I find inspiring or insightful. So it helped in writing this by being able to look back at several things that I really took to heart and was able to get to where I am now in such a short amount of time. So right there, uh, take notes, you know, it doesn't matter if it's this podcast or a YouTube thing that you're watching or reading a book. I think it's important to, I, I typically start like a notes page on my phone. Um, and I have lots of different categories for whatever I'm listening to or into at the moment, just a running log of ideas, uh, client ideas, photo ideas, real ideas, um, things I'm taking away from stuff. I I think it's really good right off the bat to see that someone's listening to this or anything, you know, with 
their heart and mind and, and just kind of like getting into it with taking notes and having organized thoughts so they can go back and revisit certain topics or ideas. And then it'll key up into their brain of like, oh yeah, I remember that. I got to focus on that. I think that is a, if, if you are taking notes, you're, you're ahead of the game. Yeah. And I think sometimes people think I need to store these notes forever. Just simply writing it down is a good exercise because it, it, you introduce another channel of learning just by writing something down. Don't feel like it needs to be permanent. The other thing about taking celebrating wins, looking back where you came from, I do that every single day. People know in the journal, just writing down your daily wins and you can flip back through your book and you're like, wow, I've come a really long way. So this is, sounds what Aaron here is, Aaron, the email writer is talking about. So let's continue. He says, I'll start by telling my success story and how it relates to what I've learned from your podcast and I'll try and keep it short and sweet. If you're wondering my age and where I'm currently at in life, I am about to turn 21 years old. I'll be graduating college in December 2024 of this year. I'd like to start out by saying that I think that it is amazing the coincidence of similarities with Aaron Manis and I. <laughs> We're both named Aaron, both have red hair, both are 6'5", do photography, videography, are musicians, and even played lacrosse. Wow, it sounds like you have a long lost twin brother. Anyways, <laughs> I thought that was very interesting and funny, but I'll get to my story. Imposter. I gotta pause Talk about imposter can... syndrome. I mean, this guy is just <laughs> literally he's taking my identity, it sounds like. And I'm not sure I'm okay with it. Oh, uh, it's funny. It. <laughs> uh, early in 2024, I was receiving a lot of really big no's in photography that I really had my hopes up for to be yeses. This caused me to start to lose some of my motivation and dedication. So a couple things here. It's interesting to see that I really had my hopes up for to be yeses. I think we talk a lot about setting expectations extremely, extremely low so that you can exceed them drastically. Um, I think when you when your expectations in reality don't line up, you set yourself up for disappointment. And of course, this happens to everybody. We're we're enthusiastic. We want we we want that dream gig or that dream client. It's I'm not saying don't be, I guess, totally apathetic towards it, but we need to be, I think, at times realistic. Because in his second sentence, this caused me this caused me to start to lose some of my motivation and dedication. That can be a really dangerous uh if especially I think if you're a very, very, very new photographer, because you'll, you'll just quit. Right. I think we talked a lot about that in the last episode. Uh, but it's important to know this is, this is inevitability. I mean, you're going to mm -hmm. get told no all the time. It still happens to me weekly where something I'm really excited about. And I think it's probably going to, happen or go down something comes up and it's a no and it doesn't work out and you just have to have the attitude of there's another bus coming every 15 minutes you know there's it's not the last opportunity of the year yeah. it's <laughs> there's going to be more down the pipeline so i take a minute to be frustrated or whatever go do something to channel that energy outwards and then i move on and sure enough something else comes down and it ends up being a yes yeah and there's there's a lot of different no's reframing the idea of no for me mentally really helped out there's on one end the no your stuff absolutely sucks like that's the no we assume every no is but it's right. not <laughs> no can be we just hired a photographer we wish you asked us a month ago uh we just lost our budget for marketing we just did photos last week we, a million different things uh it's not the right time or we had a bad fiscal year like whatever it is it could just be no because it's not the right time. It's nothing necessarily right. personal and not taking it personally was something that just allowed me to move through it very fast and be like, all right, that's, I'm not going to no more time wasted on this one. Like move on to the next thing. Let's just go. Let's keep going. Let's not take it right. personally. Right. Right. And I like to get in the habit of sometimes asking, is there a reason why it's not, <laughs> well, I don't know if I'll necessarily say it, necessarily say it that way, but is there a reason why right now isn't isn't a good fit so that when I follow up in the future that I can pitch what I'm pitch the project in the best possible way for you? You can ask. Sometimes people will get back to you, right? And they'll yeah. tell you exactly what you just said. Uh, right now we're kind of going through a restructuring phase. I've even had where the company's had a new CEO that didn't see the value in paying for photography. <laughs> yeah. So, like you said, but at least then you know, and that's a way to mitigate. Was it me? Yeah. 
you know? Seth knows I'm a, I'm a big fan of transparency and like getting an answer. Like just give me, I don't care what the answer is, but don't be afraid to say no, or don't be afraid. Don't kick the can down. The, Cause I'll keep trying and I don't want to keep trying if right. the answer is really like a no, we're not doing it. So I don't mind just figuring that out or, Hey, should I reach back in six months and tell me yes or no? And I'm not trying to make this awkward. Like, let's just have a convo. I think people are so scared of having a hard conversation or saying what they actually feel. Uh, it just makes things a lot harder. So I don't, I don't think it's terrible to to try to ask and find the the actual truth so you can either move on or make a note to call back in six months. Right. And you and I have had that before where it's been a no and then a year later it's a yes. Yeah. Happens all the time. So don't write those off. All right, moving on. Uh, he says, I hadn't lost the love for photography. Well, that's good. But I had stopped chasing it. I came to this one realization that I honestly think really changed my life for the better. I finally realized that I am much more motivated and dedicated to something when I am surrounding myself with that kind of content, like podcasts, YouTube videos, books, etc. I had obviously watched a million YouTube videos already while learning photography and videography, but I realized that when I was watching football videos, I was a more dedicated I was more dedicated as a college football player. When I was listening to fitness podcasts, I was dieting and working out extra hard. When I was listening to business podcasts and reading entrepreneurial books, I was coming up with new business ideas. This made me realize that I need to start surrounding myself with content that can all point back to photography. I definitely still think that I definitely still think that it is very important to have a few other forms of content and hobbies to give attention to in order to keep from burning out, but that is a whole different conversation. Yeah, uh, we talk about this all the time. Surrounding yourself in your passions and in, in your your likeness, you know. Uh if it's if it's not people, it's education, it's looking online, it's watching YouTube videos, it's practicing it's being in it being in the passion i think that's kind of what he's talking about it's like really being in it uh when i was obsessed with golf i was like in it i really was in it uh photography the same any sort of passion that y you're getting into if you want to improve at the fastest rate if you want to succeed if you want to skip skip ahead really is surrounding yourself with people that are better than you so uh, surrounding yourself with the education in that sort of topic and you will see leaps and bounds versus trying to figure it out completely on your own. Yeah. I think the other thing too is I, you've said this to me before and this is something I'll always remember. So thank you for the wisdom. You said it's kind of lonely as you try to get to the top or as you try to better yourself, maybe paraphrasing the way you said it. Do you remember that conversation you and I had? Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't necessarily remember the exact conversation. However, yeah. I do hear what you're saying. And I it's probably lonely, said yeah. that because if it's you're really going into something, you're, you're, you're doing a lot probably on your own or a lot of research on your own and a lot of practice on your own. Yeah. But where I'm also going with it is I, I think it's fair to say that the majority of people aren't interested in really really, really improving. Maybe I'm cynical, but when you start to want a lot more out of your life and there's sacrifices and things that come, I think you lose a lot of people or you threaten a lot of people's natural <laughs> way of being. It's, it's scary to people to watch you try to improve because it, it's threatening, right? Like, oh, that's the, that makes me not feel so good. And we talk a lot about where I'm going with this is we talk a lot about surrounding yourself with, you know, five people that are kind of have this, have the headspace or the success that you want. And luckily, thanks to social media, that's easier virtually now. But at least for me, there's not a ton of people in my physical vicinity that I can physically surround myself with. I often, I feel very lonely. <laughs> I mean, I have lots of people who are virtual friends and I do have a, a small cluster of really, really, you know, good people and friends. And I'm so grateful for that. And I would rather that than a large <laughs> friend group of, you know, whatever. But 
I think it's extra important not just to focus on surrounding yourself with those physical people, but also treating using that concept around books, podcast hosts, YouTubers, right, authors, etc. And it makes it so easy to form a maybe it's a parasocial relationship often, but you can generate yourself those kinds of mentors very quickly, very easily, and very effectively. Yeah, that's, that's all a great point. I, I think it's a, like you're saying, it's a matter of time. Um, some people really dive into passions full force and that takes up a lot of time and time needs to shift. You know, I, I mentioned golf often. Uh, I have a foursome that we play often. We used to play all the time. I used to practice all the time. Now there's been many golf outings where I have to be like, I have a, I have a photo gig or I have to do something or I have to edit something or can't and things shift and I get crap for it every now and again, but you, you just got to stay, you know, steadfast with what you're doing or where, right. where your heart is in the moment. Um, that sport is still a passion and always will be. I love it. Uh, it's just the time has shifted, you know, add in photography, add in anything, add in exercise, add in being a, a great dad. Like you, ha- no matter what it is, time has to shift. And sometimes you got to leave things or habits or people behind a little bit. It doesn't mean you, you don't like them or still love them or care, right. but like you're doing, you're doing what you got to do a bit. And there's a balance of course. Um, but yes, finding, Finding the people that you can kind of relate ideas off of, learn from, experience together makes it a lot more fun. And if you don't have that, like you said, um, making those connections online, learning online and pushing yourself forward, you will then meet those people, you know, eventually. If you keep If you keep rising up, you're going to just meet new levels of people. Yeah. And he kind of gets to that later in this email, but also where he says, I definitely think it's still very important to have a few other forms of content and hobbies to give attention to in order to keep from burning out. Yes, absolutely. That is a great antidote for burnout. I mean, having other things you're interested in, for me, it's people know, running, bouldering, uh, hockey, occasionally swing a golf club, not as well as you, but it's good to have those things that are fun and that you want to do, but you don't necessarily, at least for me, I don't feel like I need to be the best in the world at. I just enjoy doing them. And it takes a lot of pressure off and allows me to step away from photography, step away from podcasting, do those things, come back and come back to you know this practice and try to be the best I can at what I'm doing right now. But for those other things, I can just kind of, it's a pressure release. I've found this in my life. I need a lot of things that release pressure, right? We talked about it with the YouTube episode where I was starting from zero. Mm -hmm. I think that's a theme of mine. It just, it allows me to come back to the things that are generating the income or that really, really do matter and try and do those to the best of my ability or at full force. Yeah, I I agree. I think, you know, as far as we know, we have this one life and there's so many little things to experience and it is fun to learn something and do something and, and try it, um, from the beginning, like, like rock climbing, I think I knew from the beginning, like, I don't know if this is going to be my thing, but I I did it for a solid year, you know, like really trying and going a lot and seeing how far I could take it. And it was fun. It was fun. Now I, that skills like somewhere in my pocket, you know, again, it's not, I'm not an expert or anything, but if someone was like, Hey, we have to climb this cliff to survive. At least I would know I had kind of been somewhere here before right. I know a little bit and that's, <laughs> that's fun. It's like a, another little tool in the, in the, in the belt. But also if I flew to Connecticut tomorrow and I said, Hey, like, you want to go Boulder for an hour, even yeah. after a year, you'd be like, yeah, that'd be really fun. I think that's important. It'd be interesting to see how bad. I don't think you'd be as bad as you think. I've taken hiatuses <laughs> from it and I've gotten back and I'm like, clearly I'm not as, yeah. Yeah. The, the little it's like ballsy on the wall or whatever, but still have it. All right, moving on. He says, this is around the time I found the Photographer Mindset podcast. I'm glad you found the show. Uh, I had tried some other podcasts, but they just didn't stick with me as well. I found this podcast. I have just enough folks on photography while giving attention to other things like business and mindset to be extremely helpful and inspirational to my life. Well, I'm glad it's doing that for you. Um, Means we're kind of succeeding at what we're doing here. Yeah, that's totally 100% our goal and our focus pre every episode we record is like, what's the life lesson? What's the mindset lesson? What's the, what's the relatable to, 
to life, you know, and I've always been fascinated. I know Seth and our, that's why our pairing I think works nicely is like, we're fascinated with the, the tool of photography and sitting out for wildlife can teach you so much. Creating relationships in business can teach you so much. Failures can teach you so much. Like there's so many parallels to the actual, our actual lives and what life will put us through. I mean, heartbreak, uh, successes, um, you know, failures, winning achievements, all these things, how to deal with things. You really can look at photography and be like, okay, this really encompasses a lot. There's a lot to it. And we like to tie that all together. So I'm glad that you recognize that. We appreciate that. And that is our main goal is like making this. If, if you listen to this podcast and wanted to start up guitar, you would, I feel like you 80% of the way there, you would like learn a lot in terms of what we're trying to promote. You know, it's not just about photography. It's about life and applying it to many, many different things. That is our goal. Couldn't have said it better myself. Moving on. This is when I heard y'all, I don't know where they're from, y'all talking about not being discouraged by the no's on the way to success. We touched on that earlier. That is obviously something that we hear all the time, but I just happened to be reminded of it at the perfect time to get the slap in the face that I needed to wake up and chase my dream. Well, I don't think we're virtually trying to slap you in the face, but I did highlight that a uh, couple words there. He said, reminded of it at the perfect time. And anyone who knows me knows that I'm a believer that things happen to you when you're ready and when you're subconsciously looking for them. And often they're not as serendipitous as you think. It's like when, you're, when you have your eye on buying a new car, right? You start seeing it everywhere on the road. You ever had that? Yeah. When there's a car you really like. <laughs> It's not because suddenly there's more of those. It's just because you're subconsciously aware. It's the same with wildlife photography. I see mm -hmm. more birds <laughs> now than I ever did. Are there more birds in the world? No. I'm just, the, my brain, the neuroplasticity has changed to, to look out for that. Yeah, it's, it's like a radio. There's tons of radio waves flying all around here, but what you're tuned to, what station you're tuned to, that's what you're going to see and hear clearly. So I, I, I totally agree. That is a, that is a phenomenon of the human brain where when you're looking for something, you will find it. So, uh, I want you to look for a, a white forerunner. You're going to see it, I bet, today at some point, and you're going to look back and be like, huh, oh yeah, there's that white forerunner, because I'm saying that right now, uh, and your head's kind of tuned to it. Right. You, you might not have noticed it or thought about it if uh, we did not talk about that. So yes, what you're into, you will be finding. Brains be crazy. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. The podcast once talked about staying consistent when things are slow. I might not be getting the recognition that you want. This stuck with me because I've been doing this for three years, but it has been a very slow three years. I would make good connections, but not many things seemed to lead to anything else. I also listened to one of the podcasts soon after this that talked about not waiting for clients to come to you, especially in the beginning. You have to reach out to people to get your name out there and build your portfolio. We talked about this a lot last episode where you're not reacting to life. You're kind of making it happen where you're making opportunities happen. You're not sitting there waiting, oh, things will come to me because I have a thousand followers now on Instagram. For reference, this writer has... Uh, 450 some odd followers and they have an incredible success story that's about to come. So I just wanted to let people know that. Um, but yeah, it's really important to not expect. I think also it's, 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 it's important not to expect things out of good relationships you've just made, right? Going in with to any relationship or networking session with the idea of, I'm not here to get something out of this person. That's not what it's about. It's like, let's chalk it up as a win that I made a connection, right? And often patience pays. That person who you've met, built a really good relationship with, stayed in contact with here and there over the years, suddenly they're a business owner or they remember you and you're hired. I mean, patience pays. Yeah. And not not everything is going to be the one, you know, you can, right. you can date many people 
before you find the one that you want to spend the rest of your life with. Like, But in all those experiences, you're learning stuff. You're learning how to run your business better. You're learning how to be more efficient. You're learning how to cut down time or costs or whatever it is. So every relationship, I would argue, is very beneficial. Every relationship is something that you're getting something out of, even if it doesn't turn into more jobs. It turns into, again, uh, I'm going to do this process differently. Oh, that burned me this time, not having a, a contract. It was just a handshake over an email. I'm right. going to do this differently. <clears throat> so every relationship is something that you can take away. And eventually you get that one. You get the the one that like leads from, hey, you did a good job here. I have a brother in this industry. Uh, I'm going to give him your name. He's got a, a cousin in this. And like it just, there's that one that just seems to make it all happen, uh, hopefully um, and potentially at some point. So I think just having that mindset of like, yeah, this, this might not be the one, but I'm going to still do this. I'm still learning from it. I'm still going to get from it. I'm still going to go. Right. Absolutely. Um, anything more to add or should I continue? Yeah, I, I think, I mean, Taryn was on last week. It's it's just to reiterate that. Do not wait, you know, go, like, go for it. Like, go ask the questions. Be okay with the no's. Be okay with the maybe next year. Be okay with all that. Like, ask a lot because you do learn from all of those, again, those no's. You learn from the quick jobs. You learn from the more long-term jobs on how to structure everything. It's all learning. You, I'll tell you when you don't learn, when you are just not going for it. You're just kind of sitting on the sidelines. I thought you were going to say, I'll tell you when you don't learn, when you're not. <laughs> when you're not learning. <laughs> Put that one brilliant. on that too. Brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. brilliant. Um, this is when I reached out to a local vintage car restoration company that is nationally known for its vintage car restoration builds. They had put out a post looking for a local photographer. That's a good sign. Like they're literally telling you they need you. Yeah. And I saw where several well-established established local photographers who were also much older than me had already commented on the post as interested in working with them. So obviously a lot of interest right off the bat. A lot of competition. I reflected on what I had heard in the podcast and I decided to go ahead and try reaching out despite being terrified of receiving yet another no. Terrified is a strong word. Uh, I wonder what be maybe self-awareness exercise to dig into what, what the, why being terrified comes from a no. Is it feeling like not being enough? Is it a hurtful criticism on your art? I don't know. Maybe look into that. By the grace of God, they actually reached back out to me because they said they enjoyed working with college students in the community, liked what little portfolio I had at the time. That's great. It doesn't take a huge portfolio. Uh, and that I was also currently rebuilding my own vintage car or vintage vehicle and could relate with the company. That's just exactly it. You're relatable. You're, you're maybe not the best photographer that applied. I don't know. But you know vintage cars. You may know those cars inside and out better than all the other people who are competing for that position. I think that's an important thing to touch on. If you have a passion or a hobby or a skill outside of photography that blends cohesively nicely with a potential client, that's a much easier shoe in Right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, <clears throat> I think of all my successes with client work, it's... 90% of them, let's say, not maybe all, but 90%, I have a very relatable idea, narrative. I either already own the project, I already showed a sample, like I'm already in it. I already gave a little bit of skin in terms of I've put in some effort, I've put in some time, I've thought about your concept, I've thought about your product, your, your company without you even asking me. I think that shows a little bit. It shows relate relatability. It shows uh, care. It shows doing a bunch of like pre work. Um, not you know not a hundred photos, but maybe like a concept and a photo, and being able to relate. I think it goes a long way. Yeah. What do you think about the comment where he says I had a little portfolio at the time? Yeah. I I mean we I forget where it was, but we said you know three photos of a genre shows three enough. different sets in a genre. 
Yeah, three, Sh- right? Okay, shows shows enough. Like you don't, I don't think you need a huge portfolio. I honestly think, say you had sixty great photos of something, slim it down to your favorite five. Right? Yeah, like really don't. I've made that mistake with clients where they asked for 10 and I gave them 30 photos and 10 were great that I loved, but I gave the extra 20. And by the time they look through it all, it's less impressive. It dilutes it, right? It dilutes it. So I think slim it down and and show them impressive work, a good, a good representation of your work. Maybe not shots that are impossible to recreate or whatever, but yeah, I don't, I don't think you need a ton. I think you, they need to just see that you know what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. I've always struggled with that because you want to show, um, like, you want to show your vi- diverse <laughs> capabilities. I think yeah. I've struggled with that when building websites. So, like, yeah. for my apparel section, how many <clears throat> photos do I want to show in my apparel section? I think 12 is a good number max, 12 yeah. to 15 maximum. <laughs> I guess it's different if you're sending a Google Drive. I, I don't really know. That seems to be what looks good on my website. Mm-hmm. And it kind of get. I guess whatever gets the point across. Don't be redundant. Right. Right. Don't be redundant. Like a lot of the apparel stuff is flat lays and then it's lifestyle. And then I have other ones where it's in studio. I guess as best you can explain that visually without being redundant would be my piece of advice. Moving on, he says, this company has turned out to be a very successful returning client and it has been great working with them. Yeah, it it, it takes one. Uh, Taryn mentioned that, that one cabin that got her going uh, with a bunch of others through connections. She did a good job. It's the same thing. You you keep doing it until, you know, it, it, it just folds upon itself. It's a snowball effect. You, you keep working with people and you keep putting yourself out there. Even if they're simple jobs, they might have the next big job. They might have the keys to the next huge retainer, like whatever it may be. So don't get discouraged by no's and don't get discouraged by quick little things that you you might have to do, um, quick $500 here for a few photos or whatever it is, do those. You don't know what the, the next connection will be. So keep going. And then usually people have this sort of story. We've heard this a lot where it's like, oh, this one company turned out to be really fruitful, whether it's through them multiple times, return business or through their connections. Right, right. He says, they are well known in the car community and they have taken me to several big car shows. So literally what you were just talking about and have introduced me to a lot of big names in the industry. The podcast episode on networking was 100% in the back of my mind. Well, I'm glad it was. As I'm at these car shows, because those have been amazing opportunities to network and get my name out there and has resulted in me being able to work with some really cool brands recently. So everything you just said, right? Right. Up until now, my main photography and videography had been weddings, family portraits, etc. I mean, those pay very well. Those are genres that pay very well. But it was around this time that I had gotten to thinking about the people in this industry that I look up to, along with many guests that have been on the podcast. And it seemed like they all had two or three niches of photography, videography, that for the most part, they would stick to and master to create their main source of income. I mean, it's more fun when you're not only shooting one thing. And again, it goes back to that that topic of pressure. If you're a wedding photographer and all you're doing is weddings, if you're thrilled doing that, so be it. But maybe there's a chance to shoot in a different genre where it's just entirely stress-free. There's no client barking at you. It's a chance to enhance your skills, right? We've talked about that, how you can take so many lessons from wildlife photography and put it into a different genre, right? There's right. different skills and, and technicalities that are applicable across many different genres. And you don't build those skills unless you try tons of different stuff. You also don't learn what you really love unless you try a ton of different stuff. I think what's important about that point too is that certain genres are more income producing. I mean, you're going to make more money like statistically as a wedding photographer compared to a wildlife photographer. I mean, that's just a fact unless you're a wildlife photographer doing a ton of other stuff like running workshops all the time or if you're a huge name selling you know, right. five figure prints. I mean, you got to be realistic <clears throat> with the genre as well. Yeah, I, I think that's a good point. I think 
you know, you learn skills, like you said, from everyone or every different genre. Uh, wildlife might be, it's my meditation. It's my like, I need right. to get out and do stuff, which helps me then get back and creative. Maybe I'm thinking of other ideas while I'm out there, uh, jotting stuff down, like whatever it may be, you know, it, it just kind of keeps you familiar with the camera if it's slow between clients or whatever. So I, I, I just think it's fun. If you have fun with it, you know, go, go try lots of different things, but then you got to figure out what's going to, if you're trying to make money from this, what's going to pay the bills or like, what's going to, you know, pay for your time doing it or what do you really enjoy? And the money's not that important. Like Mm -hmm. you just have to figure out what your main goals are with that. You're ahead of the curve every time because he goes on to say, this is when I spent a lot of, (laughs) I spent a lot of self-reflection to see which niche has brought me the most personal satisfaction and accomplishment. So. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, we've read this email, it's but like I don't I think read you've read it, it beforehand. It's not like you've read it enough times to know exactly what's yeah. coming. <laughs> Subconscious. That wasn't sarcasm. <laughs> uh, I found that my three genres were sports, cars, and wildlife. So lots of opportunities there for income. Sports pays very well. It can. Cars, I, I don't know enough about it. And wildlife, I know can pay, but it is a tough, tough genre. It's more so, I think, for, like you said, meditation personal practice, just being in nature, appreciating the outdoors. He says, I had spent a few months really searching deep within within myself, trying to figure this out. And I finally said these thoughts out loud in a conversation with my dad late one night, just shooting the breeze, talking about life. The very next day is when I got a call from NASCAR driver, Jeb Burton. Uh, I'm not sure who that is. He's obviously a NASCAR driver, but I guess that's a big name in in the NASCAR field. Uh, I had done a photography job a year ago for the Natural Disaster Relief Organization, God's Pit Crew, which sponsors him and got to meet him briefly. It's amazing how these little funnels or these things just lead to one another, right? <laughs> like, we were, yeah. like we've been talking about earlier. He says, apparently I had made a good impression as he called me to offer me a job doing photography and videography for him full time. First impressions are so important, right? And it's so easy to make a good first impression. I think the first piece of advice is don't try so hard to make a good first impression. Be yourself, be professional. The easiest things you can do are what? Be on time, look, (laughs) dress yourself well, don't look like a slob. Yeah. Speak well, shake people's hand, look them in the eye, ask questions. Don't spend the entire time talking about yourself. You know, these are very basic, I guess, soft skills that we can always improve, of course. But and you can set yourself apart from so many people by just showing up, being on time, being humble, asking questions, doing what's asked of you. And this is, you know, I'm not sure if this job was paid or not, but it's for a natural disaster relief organization. It's for, uh, I don't know if it's a nonprofit or it's just, it sounds like. He had done work for a uh a relief organization yeah. that I guess later on we find out he's associated, which but sponsors either, him, which sponsors either, him. Yeah. Either way, it seems like it's something that's altruistic. It's a, it's a program that's helping through natural, you know, disaster relief. So you're, you're putting yourself in a situation that automatically says like, oh, that's a pretty good dude. Like you're, you're involved in an organization that's, I assume being super helpful, you know, right. in, in areas. So being there, meeting people, networking, you're putting yourself in good situations. Yeah. Yeah. And then he goes on to say, not only would this be doing content for his racing team, but also for his outdoors hunting show that he does during the off season. Gee, it's almost like <laughs> practicing tons of different genres is valuable, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? He mentioned he's interested in wildlife photography and cars. I mean, just like we've talked about, professionals and you know everyday people have different interests, right? He has an outdoors hunting show. It's oh, I, well, I do wildlife as well. Yeah. <laughs> now you've set yourself apart just by practicing different genres of photography, right? Yep. Yep. He goes on to say, this was literally an answer to prayers as I had literally said out loud for the first time the day prior that I wanted to focus on sports, cars, and wildlife, which will all be met with this job. Now, I'm never, I don't want to discredit your faith. It sounds like you are somewhat religious. I just want to remind you that it's not all, you know, what would be the word, Aaron? Um, 
Well, it's, you, you it's, put yourself it, it, in a lot of good situations and you you did the work. Right. You you practice those three fields, uh, cars, sports, uh, wildlife. And then there happens to be a job that entails all of those. And you're able to say, yeah, because I, I put in the work. Right. Um, so, you know, if if I'm praying for that, that job and they come to me and they say like, Hey, can you do X, Y, and Z? And I can't do X or Y. doesn't matter how much I've been praying. Like I didn't put in the work. So you've right. put in the work in those things. And I think there's credit for that too. In that sentence there, there, there's a the answer to your prayers. And because of the prayers you put in the work to make those prayers, even prayers. Right. So faith and, and your effort can exists together. together. I just wanted yeah. to make sure that we, you know, we don't discredit all the effort and hard work and learning and the, the, you know, that you did to put yourself in a position to win, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yes. He goes in between this phone call and my first race that I went to as a form of a trial run with this team, I had listened to a podcast where you talked about not just delivering great photos, but making it a great experience for the client to work with you during the process. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's, that's really important. We talk about relationships all the time. Everything is relationship. So going, you're meeting the client for the first time. This is, seems like a pretty extensive job opportunity. Uh, vid- videography of a show in the off season, taking footage for that. Um, photos, the sport, the actual, uh, his career of NASCAR. Like you're, you're doing a lot of different things. Um, this could be a huge opportunity. So you don't want to go in there and rub them the wrong way. Like they're, they're going to think like, well, this is a big job. We're going to be spending a ton of time with this person. And we didn't really click and not to put pressure on it, but again, just being yourself, not trying too hard, making a good first impression is, is important. And just being yourself. Yeah. And he said, making it a great experience for the client beyond just the deliverable assets. How are you doing that? You know, how are you making, what are some small things you're doing to make it a great overall experience? Is it just back to those soft skills, showing up on time, communicating well? I think showing preparation, showing organization, showing this is my folder system. This is what we're going to do. These are the ideas I've thought of thus far. We haven't even started yet. Like kind of showing that you are already ready to go. Like you're ready to go. There's not going to be a lot of hand holding. There's not going to be a lot of teaching. And you're also open to suggestion. You're open to conversation. All all those little things, I think, go a a really long way. Um, Listening a lot. I don't you're you're the help in a sense. You're not the life of the party. You don't want to right. be coming in there and being a huge personality and taking over. You know, I think I think humor goes a long way, but it's such a balance. Like just being careful and cautious, I think is is a is a nice way to approach a new relationship. Like not just full blown, you know. Right. Those right. are my thoughts. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, I I think it's also just even Kent, in addition to what you've said, just simple things we've already talked about. Showing up on time, showing up early. Yeah. I know, For as an example, this isn't really a client-customer relationship, but when we had Trav in the bush on, Mm -hmm. he, before we had even sat down to record, he shared a story of his podcast setup, said, hey, like I'm going to be on the Photographer Mindset podcast tonight. And I was like, wow, not many people do that. (laughs) Yeah. Right? Like that's just really nice. He was early. And then, you know, we asked for headshots and videos that that our guests record. They were in there like within a couple hours. Make it easy, not hard. It was just so easy. I'm like, wow, that is, (laughs) that's awesome. Thank you. And that's not hard to do, I guess is my point. Right? Yeah. He goes on to say, this was definitely something that I wanted to implement into my life because I do not think I had done a good job of that beforehand. Well, it's pretty honest and self-aware. This is definitely something that I had struggled with and still struggle with because of a speech impediment. I have a stutter that seems to come and go. One minute I have a good hold on it and, I'm un- and I am able to use what I've learned in speech therapy. You probably would never notice that I have one. The next moment, it's like I can't seem to get three words out smoothly. I have an earpiece that was made to actually help people stop stuttering. It works great, but it does not work in loud environments like a racetrack. 
Making sure I made a lasting impression was very important to me. I'm naturally an extrovert, but sometimes I let the impediment hold me back. The podcast really stuck with me and gave me the motivation I needed to break down that wall. Well, I'm glad. I really tried to get a grip on my speech impediment, went out of my comfort zone and was talking with the guys on the race team, the drivers, the other people at the track and trying to be overall sociable despite my fear of stuttering. I guess that's the point is that it would have been easy to say, oh, I'm going to be judged. People are going to make fun of me or they're going to think less of me because I'm at this place where uh, my, my instrument isn't going to work to help me with my speech impediment or I'm going to lose what I learned in speech therapy and I'm going to look silly. I'm going to look foolish. People are going to think that I'm not a professional, et cetera. And that could eventually gatekeep you from a great experience that would further your career. So it's nice to hear that you cast all that aside. Yeah. And I, th- I think with, you know, with something like that, just the, the more you work on it, the more positions you put yourself in. I, I, I know that stress and anxiety is not going to help um, things like that. Uh, so being comfortable surviving surviving that first one i bet made the the second time you guys were all together that much easier um you know i i I think just being honest about it transparent whatever you have to do um and 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 try to relieve the stress and anxiety of those social interactions for anyone i think can be can be a wall that we have to break down like uh, am I gonna am I gonna say something wrong? You know, what do they feel about this? Can I be myself? Just all this worry about will we be accepted? Mm-hmm. And ultimately, the again, the worst that can happen is they're like, ah, we're we're not vibing, and that's probably good to know, you know. Right. And then you you move on and you, you find something else that works. Um, it sounds easier said than done, but if you have that sort of attitude of like, I'm gonna relax and be me. Uh, I'm gonna it's just going to help it to succeed. Yeah. I think self-deprecating humor is often a great, again, pressure release. Yeah. And if, if you're talking to someone and stuttering and they're feeling awkward, it could be like, Oh, I can't even get three words out. I'm just so excited to be here. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Like you're acknowledging that, uh, maybe what you're doing is, is like not normal or whatever. You're you're aware. They're aware. We don't have to hide it. It's the elephant in the room. Maybe like, let's just, Let's, let's, t- you know, let's use humor to make an awkward situation less yeah. awkward. I like to do that when I have a big pimple. I go, oh my God, look at that heater. <laughs> <laughs> that heater <laughs> but it, it's, it's like, a, I, I, I honestly feel things like that is a soft social skill where it, it, it removes the pressure awkwardness that that person that you're talking to may feel. It's like, oh, now I can stare at Seth's pimple. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I yeah. think it's, uh, and it's just, it, it showcases that you're a down to earth person. Yeah. It's a great tool. Um, yeah. Self-deprecating humor. And it shows confidence, I think too. It's like, yeah, I have, a, you know, I have a stutter, big deal. I'm a professional. I'm here to do work. Yeah. Uh, I'm also funny. Exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, while I did have my moments where it was hard to talk, I made sure to power through to continue trying to make a good impression and ultimately provide a good experience of working with me as a photographer videographer exactly what we just talked about the race day went really well jeb burton liked having me around and now i will and i will now be officially working with him full time next year while finishing out this year as part time that's awesome it's it and if we rewind it's amazing to see what all this you know the the, the string and train of things that have led to this yeah he says i've been slowly building a name for myself locally when it comes to wedding photos and videos I'll not be able to continue doing weddings with this job, but I don't want to turn down any more wedding gigs because weddings do pay very well. I mean, it'll get to a point where you're going to have to make an assessment of what's going to be better for you long term. And better could be what's going to make me more money, what's going to make me more satisfied, what's going to pay better career dividends, get me to a place I want to be. I mean, weddings may make you a ton of money in the next couple of years, but is that what you want to be doing? Maybe this gig that you're working right now leads you to being like a full-time NASCAR photographer at the highest level. Right. Right. Maybe that pays more. Maybe you're at the track is where you want to be. So, I mean, I get, we all get to a point where we kind of make sacrifices and make decisions (laughs) to the best of our ability with the knowledge we have now. Uh, But it's good to have that future vision, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, I I think it's always a, a transition and, Again, you only have so much time and you have to just put your 
your eggs in the basket where it best suits you. Not always money wise, but you know, enjoyment of life. Right, right. Well, it seems like he has a plan to kind of do both here. So he says, the plan is to expand into an actual production company where I have contracted videographers and photographers who will film and photograph the weddings and I will still handle editing, contracts, and any meeting and communication with the wedding couple prior to the wedding. I don't know too much about wedding photography, but you know this is awesome to hear. I guess you realize uh, for big expansion, for big dreams, for ambition, you need a team. We've talked about this. You know, you and I are in that space too with the show. We can't do it all. Uh, we need some of our time back. And uh, I think it gets to a point where you're, you need to be bigger picture. I don't know if wedding couples want the person they're meeting with to be different than the person they're shooting with. I don't know enough about that. That might be something to explore. Sounds like you would probably know more about that than I do. But building a team, you get to a point where you, I think you, you max out what you can do on your own if you still want to have any sort of life. Yeah, it comes a point where you have to like let it go or hire other people to, to keep right. it going. Because again, time, like you, you can't do weddings if you're not there and you're doing it all on your own. Like it just, you'll just have to cancel gigs or, or not accept them. But if you have a way to do both, great. You know, right now I have a way to do both my careers, both what, what we're doing, my passion side of, of photography and the show and taking some client work every once in a while and keeping my job in the school, which fills another sort of box in my life. Um, so it works. It works right now. At some point you have to maybe decide or, or do different things, but um, sounds like you have a plan and I hopefully, hopefully it works. Yeah. And I mean, the rest is really kind words for our, uh, our podcast, which I don't need to continue reading, but I think this is a really cool success story. It starts with a lot of struggle. You know, I'm making good connections. They're not really leading anywhere. I think there's a lot of self-awareness where mistakes were made or where there can be improvement. I think there's a good recognition that I need to surround myself with content, not just people, content that is who I want to be. And... I think, yeah, I think we he's mentioned three years, like it being sold short for three years and then it picking up. He didn't quit in that time. I think that's right. what we talk about the most is like, there's that beginning time with anything that you want to try. Oh, I want to learn how to play piano. Okay. It's going to suck for like three years, like really suck. Like how much do you want it? You know, uh, I want to, I want to make money for, with photography. Okay. It's going to suck for a while. Like it, it's going to be a slow go, but it builds upon itself. Like that's the cool part about any sort of, I think, passion that you keep going with. Like one client turns into three and then three clients turns into nine. And then all of a sudden now you're like, now I have two companies and I have to hire people to keep them going. Like it's, it's kind of cool that it, that it can grow and expand and exponentially grow if you stay at it and keep learning and shifting and pivoting to figure out what works best. Couldn't have said it better myself, man. Well, we appreciate this email very much from Aaron Haley. That's Aaron underscore Michael underscore productions. I mean, if you have a good story that you think would be helpful for listeners either of <laughs> yeah. uh, something you're trying to work out or a success story or a combination of both. Keep it short. Send an email uh, to Aaron or I the, or the general email. It's on the website. And yeah, preferably um, someone that looks like Seth and has the name <laughs> Seth next. So then we can get them going with a podcast of their own. Couple doppelgangers. Seth and Aaron. Yeah. Bizarro. Exactly. Me. <laughs> exactly. No, this, I, I really like this format today. Hopefully listeners did too. I think it was just a good reminder of a lot of the concepts we talk about. Yeah, uh, I think I've said it myself. I read books ten times because I need to absorb it constantly, 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 and then I become it. And then becoming it leads to good things. So I hope that's kind of what the show does, even if it touches on the same concepts frequently, just in different ways. But uh, I'm curious to know people's thoughts. They can. Um, they should head to YouTube, leave a comment on what they thought of the episode. That uh, speaking of learning curves, that's been really fun. Yeah. Um, talk about humble beginnings, zero, but yeah. go subscribe to that. If you're enjoying the show, it's a great way to support us. And I got nothing else. That was really fun today. And I appreciate your time, man. I will be 
in Saskatchewan when this comes out or just getting back. Very cool. Jealous. Yeah. Yeah. Backcountry camping, no service. I have a sat phone. I will be disconnected from the world for six days and I cannot Ooh. tell you how excited I am to be nice. <laughs> unaccessible. Yeah. I don't think I've had that in a very long time. No, that'd be a nice little break for you. Yeah. And I've never uh, backcountry camped, so we'll see. Cool. We'll see. Very exciting. Well, you want to do TPM artwork? Yeah, I want to do TPM artwork. Forgive yeah, us, folks. The last episode we did with just Aaron and I it had been so long since we hadn't done a, a non-guest episode that we just blanked. And that's our fault. That's why you have checklists. That's why you have checkl- checklists. I almost just signed off the show today and Aaron said, nope. Nope. TPM artwork. So we haven't done TPM artwork in a while for people who are wondering <clears throat> what that is. Maybe you're a new listener and you haven't gone back and listened to the old episodes. Uh, on episodes that Aaron and I do alone, we pick a TPM artwork, which is photo, which are photos that have been submitted on Instagram using the hashtag TPM artwork. We use it as the cover photo for an episode that people can see on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. <clears throat> we talk about your photo, which we're going to do about this individual shortly. And we leave a link to your Instagram page in the episode description. So a chance for people to find your work. And today mm-hmm. we had on, who's, uh, today's at TPM artwork rather is Carolina Nuri Wild. I don't know if this is her second or third time, but look at that cute, cute hyena. Yeah, her work's awesome. Her work's so awesome. She's been a guest on the show too, I think two times, three times, and has so much insight. She's in Africa, South Africa, I think near Kruger. I think her and her partner offer a ton of uh, wildlife safaris. Yeah, safaris. In in Africa. Amazing animals and super jealous. And her her feed is just beautiful. Yeah, and incredible. All the animals there. Lots of Great. tutorials too, so a good place to go learn wildlife photography. Or in, if you're interested, go check out those episodes with her too. Look for episodes that have Carolina Nuri Wild in the title. And uh, you can find her work by clicking the link at the bottom of the episode description. Uh, with that, what else, man? That's it. I hope you have a good day. I'm going to go to get some activity in. It's some been a morning episode. Fitness. This might have been our earliest episode ever. <clears throat> I still have the morning voice. I can tell it's different than the night voice. <clears throat> a little bit raspier, a little it's more a little resonance. Bit more stuck. It gets stuck like that. Like, <laughs> is it your pilot voice? We'll be flying at. Uh... If you take a look out of the right side of the aircraft, <laughs> we can see the Grand Canyon. Yep. Yep. With all the tourists, it. you can tell we're losing it. It is early because we are it losing is early. It. All right. Till next time. All right, man. Take care. See ya.